Hey everyone, this is Sam from Wargamer Online, and I have got a nice little special unboxing today. Now this was uh, donated, I say it was donated, well, Jack, one of the viewers of the channel, um, donated £100 on a live show the other day, and basically said to get something pretty. And I've been talking about this ship, and I decided that I wanted to do a conversion with my Caradron Overlord Ironclad. So I'm going to be using the Ironclad kit, and I also wanted to mix this kit into it because it's a human sky fleet they're not as good at building tech or ships or anything as well as the dwarves are or the dwarden are so i wanted to represent that and i'm going to try and use wood from this kit to represent that so there's going to be bits of the hull which is going to be damaged or destroyed or patched up by some of these wooden panels and i just wanted to take a look at the kit and see what was inside so you're luckily enough Thank you to, to Jack to be able to see what's inside this box. I don't think, uh, you know, if you're going to be doing the same as me and making a, a ship to be used with the Caradon Overlords, this is probably going to be perfect. But for the actual rules for the Ideneth Deepkin, I think it's got some pretty nice uh, extras for that as well. So we'll take a look. Anyway, box looks quite nice. Nice spectral. It looks like a decent sized thing as well on the back. Ooh, if we get rid of the glare, there we go. Rules are included, so we'll take a look at those as well. We've got some nice little creatures, little fishy things, which match the Ideneth Deepkin theme. And I quite like all these little barnacles around the outside, although I probably will... I don't know whether to remove them or put them on. I have seen some of the Caradron Overlords sky ships that have got barnacles on them and almost like they're flying around in the sky and it's almost the same as flying, uh, sailing around the sea. So I may keep the barnacles on, it depends. So first of all, we'll take a look at the instructions. So this is the Gloomtide Shipwreck. Uh, okay, it looks like it's coming in at least a quarter of the ship. So it's in four quarters. I've got the front part here. It's nice that that isn't complete because it means I can mix that onto my Overlord ship quite nicely. Same with the undersides. I can almost strap the size of this onto the Caradron ship and then have the metal underneath it maybe. Maybe I could do two ships out of this. I do need to pick up a, maybe a couple of frigates or whatever. Ah, that's a shame. The front of the ship is actually attached and you just put the arms and the face onto it. So that's a shame because I could have used that. Although I am using the giant griffin instead, which Carl has, has handed over to me. So thanks again, Carl, for that. And there we go. It's on its side. So it looks like it's a complete ship and then you place it on its side. So it could be used upright perfectly. Oh, we'll just flick through some of these instructions. What else have we got? That's the uh, Boeing. That's nice. Properly destroyed. The back is one piece as well. And we've got some sides and a giant lantern. That's definitely going on it. And we've got the giant thingy that holds the sail up. Rules wise, so it is a terrain feature consisting of one shipwreck scenery model. The model is supplied in two halves. You can either fill the two halves as two separate terrain features or place the two halves so they are touching in order to form a single large terrain feature. That's really cool, so it depends what you want to do. You probably still want to build these as two separate ones and yeah, place them next to each other. You don't want to build it as one full ship, otherwise you don't get the benefits from that. Uh, the rules we have, so roll a dice each time a wound or a mortal wound is allocated to an Iron Earth Deepkin unit, wholly within six inches of this terrain feature. On a six up, the wound is negated. Now that's interesting, you've got to be wholly within six inches of the terrain feature. At the start of, uh, and that rule as well, just to survive that's like a save after save uh, nurgle style rule chucked in there predators of the ether sea at the start of your hero phase roll a dice for each unit within three inches of this terrain feature do not roll for ideneth deepkin units on a four up the unit suffers one mortal wound on a six up the unit suffers d3 mortal wounds so it's kind of like dangerous terrain and you only have to be within three inches so this is quite a large radius so that's it rules wise we'll take a look at the actual kit Ooh. Right, so just to do a comparison, that is one half of the ship, and it's not even the full part, that's like the back end of it. If I put the carriage on one, it looks like it's been, oh my god, it's, it's perfect. You could just do a ghostly carriage on themed army. Look at the size of that. It's practically the size of the carriage on Overlord ironclad ship, and it's £25. If you're trying to save money, build some huge sails on the back of it, make a undead carriage on pirate themed army, even with pirate dwarves or whatever in suits, and you can get away with that. You just put normal carriage on guys because they're in armor and you just class them as all being undead, floating around the ether sea, or maybe not the ether sea because they can't conjure it, but flying around some mystical reasoning behind it. 
that's, I mean, rules aside, that's going to be perfect for what I want to do. That's going to be really cool. Anyway, get the ironclad out of the way, because we're not looking at the ironclad today. But look at this, there's like vases, 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 some little coins and some jellyfish looking thing, or maybe a stone on there. We've got some sea creatures, now they're not going to go on my base, but they're definitely going to get painted up. They're, they're quite cute. I do love this piece, which looks like the back of the ship, where the, the wheel and the captain would stand, I think. But look how nicely detailed that is. It's got some barnacles on there, got little bits of wood. Uh, underside. Yeah, this is this is a really nice kit. For £25, that's just one half of the boat. This is the other half. Ooh, wow, look at that. Sorry, I'm getting really excited over wood texture. It's a little bit weird, isn't it? Oh, look at that. I love that sail, sail stick, I'm going to call it. With some rope wrapped around it, a little bit of metal with a hook on there, with a giant bell there. Another fish with a little school of fish above it. Those arms are nice. And the statue at the front, you could almost paint them up as, convert that into a Sigmar model maybe. Maybe Sigmar himself. It's got the right sort of scale. Maybe cut off the front of the ship somehow and use him as a... Oh, maybe we could use him as Sigmar. Does that work? That... <laughs> Maybe that is exactly what I'm going to do. Start a Sigma model. Obviously, he's going to have his giant ripped ab abs on the front there. Get that out of the way. That lantern's nice as well. Broken on one side. Broken on both sides. And then there's, a, there's the face of the actual figurehead of the ship. That works. That's definitely a Sigma model conversion kit. You just need to find some way of giving him legs that are suitable. I don't know how you do that. Maybe just pure energy. So that's the two parts of the front of the ship. Oh wow, jeez, this kit is nice. Okay, this is the back of the ship. Look at that. It's annoying to put fish on there. For me, that's not going to be easy. Unless I come up with them as their flying <laughs> flying fish. I mean, we've got flying Ideneth fish anyway. There'll be a reason. It's a fantasy world. But I like this. It's got Sigma iconography along the backs of this which that fits perfectly for my human sky fleet but it's just really nice really nice shape on that that's definitely going to be used all these nice little panels which are separate that you can glue on so that's that's the back so we've got three sprues so far two sprues which is the, the front halves of the ship and some of the gubbins that go with it and then one sprue which is the back end of the ship so that's both back ends and then Oh, it just goes on. This is this is probably one of my favourite little kits. And then the actual back of the boat there, look, and it even says Sigmar on there. So works perfectly for a, few, a human sky fleet or a human. Oh, what's that? What is that? Is that like a squid or an octopus? Squished. So there's like octopus tentacles coming from the bottom of the ship, like it's stuck underneath the boat. And there's like a manta creature there, but it's not a full manta. Anyway, look at this. Beautiful detail with little Sigma style nautical measuring devices that are on the bottom of here with some more ornaments and coins and broken vases and stuff. And then the actual base of the ship, which I, I won't be using for this, but that could be forming some form, some part of terrain. Maybe this will go, I might get some of these Sylvaneth trees or give these to Patrick so he can mix these into his Sylvaneth trees. Although saying that, he's not going to have sea creatures going around it. No, it doesn't work. Lots and lots and lots and lots of detail. And we've got another nice little eely fish creature on here. Beautiful. I'm just going to zoom in on this because there's some nice little creatures on here. Okay, so you can see the octopus here. So there's some nice little skulls and the little tentacles and sea, sea little vegetation. Is that a, what's that say, 2L or? Don't know what that says, there's the manta dude. Got some starfish, some shells, seashells. She sells seashells on the seashore, there we go, I said it. I never used to be able to say that. And there's, there's the nautical measuring instruments. Some amazing sprues there. So really impressive bit of kit. It's going to be fun to build this up and to chop it up and mix it into the ironclad. Really impressed with that. Let's get some of these out as well so you can see these in 
better detail. There's the back of the ship with the barnacles and the little school of fish flying through, sailing through, swimming through. And there we go, Sigmar iconography. I'm actually really excited. The ironclad's going to be the next thing I build, 100%, because I'm going to be using this as part of it. Anyway, that's the unboxing. Not much more I can say. I'm going to do more videos or at least put stuff up on the Facebook page or on the forum. So check both of those out if you're not already on there. And uh, check the updates for my Caradon Overlord Human Sky Fleet that I've been working on. Hopefully this uh, unboxing has shown you what the kit is like. You might have some ideas of what you want to use this for yourself. If you do, let us know down below if you're going to be making your own human ghostly sky fleet or a Dwarden Dwarden Caradron Overlord Skyfleet, let us know. And I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching.